America's school children have been trapped in a government-run monopoly. The blob, a so-called public school system that stifles most all innovation. So schools don't improve. It's not for lack of money. We've tripled what we spend on K-12 education. But test scores don't go up. The good news is that there are all kinds of alternatives now that allow kids to escape the government monopoly. And now here's one, uh, one more that I think you will be interested in if you watch my shows. Uh, it's because it was created by none other than libertarian congressman Ron Paul. For homeschoolers, you're introducing the Ron Paul curriculum, which is what? Well, the curriculum is a, a freedom curriculum. It's based on the freedom philosophy and those things that I've talked about now for 30 years, especially in the last five years. So if you're talking about economics, it's going to not be Keynesian. I mean, everybody knows I'm not going to teach Keynesian economics. It's going to be Austrian free but market. But you're not going to go into every home and teach. How's it going to work? Well, it's going to be homeschooling. It's going to be through the Internet. If we study the Constitution, we don't want to read it out of one of those textbooks that's so biased. They're going to read the Constitution, but they will have also a lecturer to do video lectures that the uh, young people can watch at their own speed. And uh, it, it's going to be designed to get people to read. It's going to be designed to people write. It's going to be designed to think about businesses and how to, how to interact. So uh, I'm very encouraged by this, and uh, hopefully uh, we can participate in this transition away from the disaster that's happening in our public school system. And you're going to charge homeschoolers about 250 bucks. A whole family. But who needs to pay you? Stossel in the classroom, my charity, it's free. And the teachers can get these free videos, right. some of which you're on, yeah, matter, matter uh, of explaining fact, you know, economics. Matter of fact, in the book, we mentioned about some of the free ones, but we have to, you know, sell our programs. But ours, is, uh, ours will be uh, free from kindergarten up to fifth grade. So that's, a, you know, a pretty good start. I went through public school system, 12 years of it, but it's different today. And people are suffering. They don't know what to do, but there's so much poor education. There's so much crime, so many drugs and problems in public schools. The parents are looking for something. And there are a lot of options now. You have private school options, which some people can't afford. But homeschooling is affordable. You know, it, it isn't. It isn't that bad. There are some free courses out there, and some are inexpensive, and the people are gravitating that way, and they get a much better education. Just think of how well the homeschoolers have done, you know, when it comes to uh, competing with they public schools. They win the spelling system. bees and the Geography. Math. They don't even teach geography anymore. That used to be my favorite subject. Now they don't even want to teach it anymore. Well, let's meet a couple homeschoolers. Can you kids come out? This is Veronica. Andre Odas, she's 16. Jeremiah Birch is 12. Both are homeschooled by different families here in New York City. Uh, you guys must have no friends if you're homeschooled. <laughs> Some people have said that. Some people have. Do you have any friends? <laughs> of course we have. I find it entirely not true that homeschoolers have no friends. I've actually made a ton of more friends with the homeschooling program. Uh, well, how if you're at home all the time? Well, there's a, a group of uh, 7,000 parents, Nigeria, and uh, they do little uh, social activities. Your mother made a video of a dance where homeschoolers get together. This is in a church basement, and this is the kind of thing? Uh, yes, they hosted a little da dance there for all the homeschoolers in the community. They have soccer classes. Uh, I went to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, made a bunch of new friends there. And uh, they do like three to f five plays a year, and I was in one of them, and I made a bunch of friends there. And so I actually made a bunch more friends with homeschool. And Veronica, you take ballet classes, karate lessons, you meet kids outside the home? Yeah, exactly. And what do you like about, I would think, being home with your mom? <laughs> you like this? Yeah, I actually really do because it allows me to, uh, it allows me to morph my curriculum into um, my interests and, and direct uh, what I'm learning to help me learn more about what I want to do when I grow up and I've really developed an interest in being a writer 
And so um, I found that homeschool allows me to do extra stuff that helps me develop my mind so that um, I'm better prepared for that. But your brothers go to regular school. Yeah. At, um, when we all got to high school, my parents gave us the choice. They said, you can go to high school or you can keep on going to homeschool. And my brothers said, we want to go to high school. They felt like they could be more motivated to do work, and they thrived really well in the school um, environment. And you wrote a Wall Street Journal op-ed about I this. I did. Yes. That's how you came to our attention. Um, Jeremiah, you have regrets at all? Things you miss in regular school? No. <laughs> <laughs> sound, sound pretty certain. And y y you weren't always homeschooled. You, just the past four years, you tried private school. That was too expensive. Then public school. In public school, you were bullied? Uh, yes, I was. I was bullied almost on a weekly basis because I was so small. And I was in kindergarten, so I didn't really know how to fend for myself. Uh, One guy threatened to take your watch. Uh, yeah, yeah. I brought a little toy watch to school, and he, and he said he would kill my family if I didn't give the watch to him. And I was scared because, I mean... So I, are you just being homeschooled because you're hiding from government school? No, no. It, it also works for uh, my acting. I'm a performer, and I sing. And uh, it's good because uh, I can have, like, a big audition one day, and then uh, I can do school the other day if I'm busy all day with a show. I usually do it on uh, weekends and sometimes holidays because uh, that's when most of the schools are shut down and there's not really any auditions. And it's not just your parents teaching you. You take live classes on the web. Uh, yeah. She does. I, I do. attend an online school called Veritas Press Scholars Academy. And um, so it, there are scheduled classes during the week and I go on and I attend. and. Um, and so I, but I can do that from home. So Dr. Paul, how would your curriculum add to things like that? It would be, it would fit in, and I think the extra activity is very important that you, that you pointed out. But I think the important thing that they're talking about, I, I noticed two things. One, it's self-directed. See, they pick and choose on what they want to do uh, in their life and make their plans, and that's what a good program would be like. But the other thing is, it should be fun. It seems to me like they're enjoying what they're doing, and all you have to do is look at what's happening in public schools. There's a lot of boredom and, you know, and, and no fun. And there danger. is, but I'm going to stop you, and I should have stopped myself. We shouldn't call it public school. Government school. Government school. Yeah. Homeschooling was recently considered radical. Politicians said, we must be in charge of education. Parents can't teach, and if they do, their kids won't socialize. Well, now we know it's not true, and average homeschooled kids do very well. But even homeschooling has structure. The parent is the teacher, often states dictate some of the curriculum. Today, the most radical form of schooling is something called unschooling. If I show up for school, what's, what's my day? Beats me. At Sudbury Valley School, there are no classes, no tests, and no curriculum. Students are only required to show up for five hours a day. When you get here, you have to check in. Okay. And when you leave, you have to check out. These are the only half days in the day. It's just so amazing to just come here every day and know that I can do whatever I want. Sometimes what they want to do is play video games. Others play music for hours. Why did you start Sudbury Valley School? We had children. My wife and I had children, and our oldest child was getting to be school age. And uh, it was a horrible prospect to put them through the regular school system. They do their best to destroy the natural interests, curiosity, and passions of children. Here, nothing is forced on kids, not even learning to read. Don't you think children will figure that out? I learned to read when I was... Probably 11. Yeah, I taught myself how to read. Oh, really? Yeah. How did you do that? I don't know. I just tried and tried. <laughs> One of the coolest things about being here is, like, I didn't know if I wanted to go to college last year. Because, like, when you go here, it's not like anybody's telling you, like, yeah, you need to go to college. My path, like, has led me to going to college. At first, it seemed like there were no rules, but there are rules. It's just that the kids have an equal say in making the rules. One vote per kid. The community decides everything. And by the community, I mean the collection of students and adults. 
There is no hierarchy here whatsoever. When they opened the school, everyone was skeptical. The lead lawyer was pacing back and forth on the floor. He said, four-year-olds, four-year-olds have the vote. My God, they'll just vote candy for themselves. The school will never run. But that's not what happens. The kids run a court system. So this is the meeting of the Judicial Committee. Yep. Yeah. It's basically a school courtroom. Yeah, so instead of going up and telling a teacher, blah, 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 did this, it's like a whole meeting. But I'm so surprised they don't vote themselves candy if they really have this control. Well, it's interesting because since they govern themselves, they're in charge of their own education, the kids are really in charge of the school, and they're much harder on themselves than any teachers or administrators would be. And you have kids raging in age from 4 to 19. A bunch of 19-year-olds don't want 4-year-olds bouncing off the walls all high on sugar. And most do go to college. 85% of them, we were told by the founders, go on to college. Now, I'd be nervous about enrolling my kids in an unschool. Uh, parents told Kennedy what convinced them is that this school gets kids to like learning. What is it about the school that attracted you? Um, well, he wants to come, um, which has not been the case in several other schools. He uh, told me the other day, he's like, Mom, wake me up for sure. <laughs> I was like, who are you? What have you done with my teenager who sleeps till 2 in the afternoon? It, like, teaches you for the real world. What did you do in public school that's different from here? Everything's different from public school. Yeah. Because you get to have fun all day. Go to a public school and you watch kids come out for recess and they're like being let out of prison. Yes. Many Americans say public schools, government schools, are one of the best parts of America. They're a melting pot. We're all in it together and those schools built the country. And I believed that until I started reporting on schools. And now I say government schools are one of the worst parts of America. The education blob claims schools are underfunded and kids would do better if only we'd give the schools a little more money. But this graph shows the absurdity of that claim. Spending's gone through the roof, while test scores have barely budged. The scores are those flat lines at the bottom. The blob also demanded smaller classrooms, and it got them, but oops, smaller class sizes did not increase performance. Bill Gates spent billions building smaller high schools. That didn't help either. I give Gates credit. He spent his own money, took measurements, and then when he found no improvement, he tried other ideas like sell Khan. In contrast, the government blob spends your money, and when their experiments fail, they continue them anyway. No business can get away with that. It's why most every service in America has gotten better, faster, cheaper but not education. Monopolies don't improve. Of course, American parents, especially those in the suburbs, think their kids' public schools are pretty good. But because there's no competition, they don't know the truth. International tests show that even the good suburban schools are mediocre compared to schools in the rest of the world. But without real competition, parents don't know what their kids might have had. Few of us can imagine the possibilities until we see the options. When phone service was a government-blessed monopoly, all the phones were black. All calls were expensive. Only when, the, only when the monopoly was busted up did we get competition and the cheap phone calls and cool phones we have now. Competition makes the difference. The Postal Service couldn't get it there overnight. None of the brilliant managers at that government monopoly could make it happen. But once FedEx appeared... But it absolutely, positively has to be there overnight. Then, suddenly, even the Postal Service could get it there overnight. Sometimes. So it's not that government is staffed entirely by lazy people. It's just that we rarely think of better ways to do things until competition forces us to. If there were a free market in education, schools would get much better. They'd compete for good teachers. The best teachers might make $200,000 a year. Government schools already spend more than that per classroom. Competition would create all sorts of innovation. I don't presume to know which innovation will be best. We've showed a few tonight, but as Frederick Hayek put it, competition is a discovery process. No one knows which innovation's best until they're tried. 
The good news is that the school choice movement has finally given the blob some competition. And a few kids, thanks to things like vouchers, charter schools, tax credits, now like going to school. I never did. But school is boring. No, it's not. They just teach us in a fun way. So you guys look forward to going to school in the morning? Yes. Those kids were at a charter school in Harlem. Once more parents notice, hey, Johnny down the street likes going to school and he's learning, then maybe they'll join the fight against the blob. And eventually, all of us will have much better lives.